What's up guys, now in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060. I thought it was time to take a look at a newish NVIDIA card and for some reason everybody seems to hate this one. So let's take a look at it and find out why. Now NVIDIA are not really known for their budget cards but now and again we do see a small gem and we saw that with the GTX 1060, a card that was extremely popular with budget gamers and it lasted a very long time. Will we actually see that again sometime? I'm not quite sure if we have already or if we actually will do in the future. I don't think it is going to be in the form of this card, but there is still time yet, so who knows. The exact model that we've got today is the Gigabyte Eagle OC 8GB, and to be honest, it's not bad. The first thing that I did notice when I actually picked this up, though, was how thin it was. It is a dual slot card, but it seems extremely thin, and it looks a little bit silly in a system. But for some reason, this one does come with three fans, completely not necessary. They do do two models of this. They do one with two fans, or they do one with three fans. I picked the three fan one up because it wasn't actually that much difference in price, and I thought the extra cooling could only go to help things. And to be honest, it isn't a terribly designed card at all. It is in a slightly grey colour with black fans, which does look a little bit weird, but does go nice with the rest of the Gigabyte kind of brand. But apart from how it looks, you can actually tell that it was designed for budget gamers, and that comes in a number of features that this card actually has. The first one is its actual power adapter here. We don't have the funny adapter that you get with all the higher end GeForce cards. You actually just get a simple 8 pin connection. That's actually going to be pretty good for budget gamers because it means they're not going to have to upgrade their power supplies or use any weird adapters. It also comes with a weird feature that I haven't seen in a graphics card for a long time. And that is on the back here where you get your IO ports. You do get two DP connections as well as two HDMI. It's been a long time since I've actually seen a graphics card with two HDMI connections, but again, that actually goes in line with how they've thought about budget gamers here because a lot of budget gamers still have older monitors and if they have a twin monitor setup, they're probably going to have HDMI ones. So the card will of course support them perfectly fine without you having to purchase anything else. I actually really like to see those features on the card because it really goes to show how they've actually put some thought into it and not just produced the same as what everybody else is doing. Underneath its completely plastic shroud here, we do have some reasonably okay specifications for a budget card nowadays. The RTX 4060 is sitting on an AD107 GPU. It has a base clock speed of 1830 megahertz. That's actually higher than the RTX 3060. It has a boost clock speed of 2460 megahertz again which is higher than the rtx 3060 and it has 3072 shaders which is actually lower than the rtx 3060. when it comes to memory it has 8 gigabytes of gddr6 which is again the same as the rtx 3060 as well as a bus of a pci gen 4 by 16. for the memory interface we have 128 bit again the same as the rtx 3060 but then the real difference comes when it comes to the power and the price the typical power for this card is 115 watts which is actually significantly lower than both the rtx 2060 and the 3060 and it has a release price of just 299 dollars which again is significantly lower than both the RTX 2060 and the 3060 as well. On paper, this card is relatively underwhelming considering its predecessors, except for when you come to that price and its power consumption. It is a much lower power consumed card, which means you're gonna get away with making some savings on a power supply, as well as obviously on the price because you're going to make a little bit of saving there but how well does it actually perform when it comes to gaming well of course to find that out we had to do some testing so let's take a look at that
So as you can see from the testing that we did, this card did exactly what it said it should do on the tin. It is clearly not a 4K card where we struggled to get 60 FPS in any of the games that we tested today. So we're going to discount that for a moment. But when it came to 1080p, it actually smashed all of the games. The only game that it really did have a little bit of a struggle in was, of course, Alan Wake 2. But then what card doesn't? Where we only managed to get an average of 42 frames per second with a 1% low of 37. All of the rest, though, provided a pretty decent 60 FPS experience. So we moved on to 1440p. In 1440p with a high preset, in most of the games, we managed to get a bug a 60 fps experience here the only ones where we seem to have a little bit of a dip was of course alan wake 2 where we only managed to get an average of 37 frames per second with a one percent low of 30 that meant the game was actually still playable but it wasn't the greatest experience the second game was robocop rogue city where we only managed to get an average of 40 frames per second with a one percent low of 29 and then we've got Starfield, where we nearly got that 60 FPS that we wanted, managing to get an average of 57 frames per second with a 1% low of 44. And then, of course, The Last of Us, where we only managed to get an average of 49 frames per second with a 1% low of 41. Those last two games were actually quite playable on the card, but again, I thought we could do a little bit better. Now, as I originally predicted, the card did fantastic in 1080p, and it did exceptionally well in 1440p as well. We're going to completely discount the 4K results here because it just simply is not a 4K card. It just does not have the power to be able to do it, especially especially trying to get those 60 FPS targets or anything higher. But for the four games where it didn't manage to get 60 FPS in 1440p, I thought by doing a little bit of tuning in the settings, we could hopefully get this card there. And I think we did a fantastic job. The first game that couldn't quite make it was Alan Wake 2. This is probably the most demanding title out of the test suite. And it really did show in our normal untuned testing where the RTX 4060 could only reach an average of 37 frames per second with a 1% low of 30. But with a bit of NVIDIA software magic, everything changed. Just enabling DLSS with a quality setting and turning on frame generation here meant that the RTX 4060 could reach up to an average of 78 frames per second with a pretty decent 1% low of 53. In this game, frame generation does have a slight effect on the picture quality, mostly when turning fast. A slight blur appears, but it doesn't take away from the experience and the game is more than playable. The second title was Robocop Rogue City, a pretty new game really, and one that even with its reasonably low minimum requirements really does need some grunt behind it to get a great experience at those higher resolutions. In our normal untuned testing, the RTX 4060 could only manage to squeeze out an average of 40 frames per second with a 1% low of 29. The low 1% lows here were really what was causing an issue, especially in terms of smooth gameplay or lack of, but again like Alan Wake 2, it has access to some Nvidia software magic. Maintaining a resolution of 1440p with a high preset Simply enabling DLSS with a quality setting and turning on frame generation, the experience completely changed. Now getting an average of 89 frames per second with a 1% low of 68, the game was smooth and more than a playable experience, really showing what these new software tools are for when it comes to your entry level graphics cards. Starfield was another title where in normal testing we couldn't quite hit that 60 FPS experience in 1440p, although it wasn't as bad as some of the others, getting an average of 57 frames per second with a 1% low of 44. This performance is actually pretty close to our target and again, like the others, didn't take a lot to really push it over the line, but for this one we wanted to go further. Using DLSS here with a quality setting, while also enabling Nvidia's frame generation, moved the performance to a completely new tier of graphics card and a near high FPS experience. With this configuration, the RTX 4060 managed to get an average of 104 frames per second with a 1% low of 77. With these settings, the performance is of course very good, but also the visual quality was maintained making it a pretty good experience throughout. The last game in our tune testing was of course The Last of Us Part 1, a game that started out so badly when it came to performance but over time it's had a lot of fixes and updates and is actually really starting to turn out as a good test subject. Within the normal testing the RTX 4060 could only manage to get an average of 49 frames per second with a 1% low of 41 which to be honest was actually quite playable and with its 1440p high settings it looked amazing too. Unfortunately for the game, we don't have access to Nvidia's frame generation technology, but fortunately we do have access to AMD's. Thanks AMD! Simply using AMD's FSR3 technology here with a quality setting while enabling AMD's frame generation, just like Starfield, the RTX 4060 can be pushed to a new tier with a near high FPS experience. Now getting an average of 108 frames per second with a 1% low of 80. Using this configuration, there is no effect on the game's quality at all, 
and it runs very smooth, so weirdly enough here, it was AMD who came to Nvidia's entry-level graphics cards rescue. Now having to use some of those fine-tuned settings that we use there, things like DLSS and frame generation, is not unusual in 2024. A lot of the actual brand manufacturers are pushing those technologies as being able to take cards like this to the next level, and I think they did a fantastic job with it. But of course, this is an RTX card, so who wouldn't want to try a little bit of ray tracing? We decided to try ray tracing on a few of those games just to see what kind of effect it would really have, and unfortunately, to be able to get a real gaming experience in those, you do need to use those tools and you need to utilize things like DLSS and frame generation. But again, I think it still did exceptionally well for those who want to try it. The first game in our ray tracing testing was Alan Wake 2. Simply running things in native just wasn't possible for any of the games that we actually tested today. But with this game running in a 1080p resolution with a high preset and ray tracing set to high, you could get a pretty decent average FPS by enabling DLSS with a quality setting and frame generation as well. With these settings, you will get an average of 72 frames per second with a 1% low of 50. The game looked absolutely fantastic. And to be honest, it played smooth enough there to get a decent experience. In Cyberpunk 2077, the RTX 4060 managed to get a very impressive performance with ray tracing, enabling ray tracing with an ultra setting, keeping the resolution at 1080p, and enabling DLSS with a quality setting while enabling frame generation. The game looked absolutely stunning and was more than playable. With the performance here, this actually would take the cards to the next kind of tier of graphics, and this was even with ray tracing set to ultra, so you're gonna have a great experience with this one. The last game in our ray tracing testing was Hogwarts Legacy. Now, I wouldn't suggest that ray tracing really does a lot in this game, Things like reflections do look a little bit better, but most of the time you're running around and you don't really notice. But enabling ray tracing with a high set in here when running everything in native really did hit the performance quite a bit. So keeping the game in 1080p with a high preset and enabling DLSS with a quality setting while also turning on frame generation, we can still manage to take this card to another tier. Now getting an average of 118 frames per second with a 1% low of 68. Again, the game looked absolutely fantastic, they always will do with ray tracing on, and it played extremely smoothly as well. As I said before, frame generation and DLSS is a must on this title, but then again, it was on most of the others, but at least technologies like this will allow people to play their favorite games with ray tracing on and still get a decent experience. Now I think in isolation, the RTX 4060 isn't a bad purchase. It's actually providing budget gamers with something that they can use to do ray tracing and pretty much play all of the latest modern games in 1080p slash 1440p with a decent performance. That's exactly what you would expect of a card of this caliber to do, and it does that perfectly fine. But when you compare it to others, is it actually worth it? Well, many people would argue this. You can get an RTX 3060 or even an RTX 3060 Ti for about the same price as one of these, but you will need to go to the pre-owned market and they will perform pretty similar, if not exactly the same, to be honest. You may miss out on a few technologies or at least be delayed on them because it takes Nvidia a while to kind of get them out into the older generation cards, but you will get a similar gaming experience from them. So that is an option for you to take. And particularly you can get the 3060 12 gigabytes, which would be a little bit of a step up over this one, consider it's only eight gigabytes for pretty much the same price. So that would probably be an option to go to. But for those of you that are on a budget and you do only want to buy the latest generation stuff, this card would be perfectly fine for you. I would actually be happy to use an RTX 4060 in a gaming PC. I don't think there's absolutely any issues there. Maybe not one so big like this. You could get away with a twin fan card perfectly fine. Cooling wise on this card throughout all of our testing, it was super cool. So of course these three fans work perfectly fine. So if that is an issue to you, then maybe go for the three van version. It works perfectly fine and it's super quiet as well. Now, of course, comparing it to other Nvidia cards is one thing, but we've also got AMD. AMD are pretty much the kings at the budget range of graphics cards. So can this thing actually compete with an AMD card? Well, for that one, you're gonna have to wait for another video. We're gonna have a video coming up soon where we put this against one of AMD's similar cards. It's a similar price card. It's slightly lower actually and we'll see which one actually comes out on top don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content and also let me know in the comments below what you think of the rtx 4060 i know a lot of people seem to hate this card i wasn't a big fan to begin with but actually seeing it in action i don't think it's that bad not when you look at it in isolation maybe it is compared to other things out there but as a card goes it does what it says and i'm sure as always i'll catch you guys in the next one